Hey guys, welcome back to another Planet Mithril Paints, and today we're tackling a somewhat challenging model, Radagast the Brown, the wizard guardian of the wilderness and wildlife. We'll be showing you how to create various complementary hues of brown across this model to really bring him to life on the tabletop. So without further delay, please sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Start by base coating Radagast skin with Bugman's Glow. Make sure to get his gnarled fingers, his calves showing from his ragged trousers and all the skin visible through the holes in his guard. Layer over all the skin now with a mix of Bugman's Glow and Cadian Flesh Tone. Once the wash is dried, relay with the previous Bugman's Cadian mix, leaving the right and flesh shade showing in the recesses. Pay particular attention here to separating out his bony fingers, eye sockets, and creating definition around the brow and his bulbous nose. Layer over again with pure Cadian Flesh Tone. Start focusing more now on the more pronounced areas of skin and facial detail to create natural depth and shadow over his features. Highlight all the skin now with a mix of Cadian Flesh Tone and Pallid Witch Flesh. Now you want to focus on such areas as defining the bridge of his nose and nostrils more, furrowing his brow and creating wrinkle lines, and focusing your highlights more towards the protruding knuckles and fingertips. Don't worry so much about highlighting his legs overly here, as they're in shadow from his robes, and it will create quite a nice contrast. Finally, add more pallid witch flesh to the mix for the final dot highlight, which would be applied to the tip and nostrils of his nose, the absolute edges of his brow, uppermost cheekbones, and the very tops and tips of the bone structure across his hand. Once finished, you can pick out his eyes with Abaddon Black and pallid witch flesh. Radagast has quite a lot of hair on him. In fact, you might say that at least one third of his front is taken up by his long, wild beard. I'm so jealous. We're going to be painting this to capture the wizened persona of this hermit, but using some slightly unorthodox shades to really give it that unkempt and ill-maintained look. Start off by base coating his hair and beard with a mix of Rakarth flesh and Baneblade brown. There are a lot of long strands that descend well below his waist, so make sure to pick all these details out well. Apply an all over layer now by adding Administratum Grey to the previous Rakarth Baneblade mix. Albeit unorthodox, this will mute the tones of the brown subtly enough to help give it the raggedy look we want once finished.
Before we wash the beard, we're going to be applying a shade with a thin down coat of Storm Vermin Fur. Now, Storm Vermin is a slightly odd colour, as it is predominantly a grey, but has some subtle brown hues running through it. By applying this as a shade here, all over the hair, we're just helping to tie together all the weird tones we've been using so far, and lay a nice base for the following wash stage. Once the wash is dried, we'll have a suitably dirty, old and slightly haggard look to Radagast's hair and beard. Perfect! Now we're going to reapply the previous paint mix in another layer, this time taking time to separate out the larger strands and clumps of hair. The texture of the hair moulded on the model is very well defined, so it will be easy to apply this layer, whilst leaving the shade and wash showing in the deepest recesses. For the next few highlight stages we're going to be continuously adding increasing amounts of pallid witch flesh to the original base mix. With every application, focus on making your highlights tighter and more precise to really give the sense of long flowing wiry hair. As you progress through the highlight stages, start to focus your paint application on more of the pronounced outer curls of hair and beard, as well as around the tips and frayed edges of this magnificent display of facial hair. We can also create definition through the moustache at this stage by drawing out our paint in thin vertical lines along its length. By the time you reach the final dot highlight stage, your mix should contain approximately 75% Palabritch flesh, and here you can apply this final paint application as a final dot highlight on the absolute outer and more pronounced curls and the very edges and tips of all the hair and beard. We want to create some differentiation between the tones of the hair and the big old glob of bird poo. To start, base coat the poo with more gas bone. Apply a layer now with Screaming Skull. This will help to give it a more organic, fresh look. Finally, apply a pinpoint dot highlight with Palo Bitch Flesh sporadically all over the poo to give it a lumpy, clumpy look. Ugh. Base coat Radagast's tack with drier bark. Don't forget to get up underneath the flaps on either side. Apply an all over layer now with a mix of drier bark and bane blade brown.
Once the wash has dried, reapply the previous mix as another layer, leaving the wash showing in the recesses and creases, notably where the flaps join the main body of the hat, between the front and the bulk of the hat, and any other subtle creases down the back of the hat itself. Add more Bane Blade Brown to the mix for the first highlight stage. Now you want to focus this more towards the edges of the hat and flaps, the more pronounced creases of material and stippling it over the front to give it a fluffy wool-like texture. Finally, apply an extreme edge highlight with pure Bane Blade Brown to the circumference of the hat itself, the very edges of all the flaps, creases on the flaps where they start to bend downwards, and stippling over again to finish off the wooden look on the front. Carefully pick out the feather with Mornfang Brown. Apply a highlight now with Deathclaw Brown. Carefully apply this as a dot highlight along both sides of the feather to create some texture. Finally, apply another extreme dot highlight to the very edges with pallid witch flesh. You can also pick out the central shaft of the feather with Abaddon Black. It's important we try and create as much definition between all the browns across Radagast as we can, to avoid him becoming one amorphous blob on the tabletop. Base coat the shoulder shawl with Steel Legion Drab. Be careful to avoid the finished hair that cascades over the back. Layer over the entire shawl with a mix of Steel Legion Drab and Zemesi Desert. This will lift the tone of the Steel Legion and give it a slightly richer look which will complement some of the more muted browns we're going to be using later on. Once the wash is dry, re-layer over with the previous mix, leaving the Agrax Thirst Shade showing in the recesses. Apply your layer here in a similar fashion to the hair and beard, separating out the individual strands of fur to create some flow and definition. If this is too much work here, a light dry brush with this mix will work just as well. Finally, apply a highlight to the shawl by adding some Pallid Witch Flesh to the previous layer mix. You want to have, at max, 50% Pallid Witch concentration to avoid the shawl looking too bright. Now Radagast can be a very daunting model to paint, there are an awful lot of brown areas of the model, I mean it is Radagast the brown so that is to be expected. 
The hardest part can be working out what sections to paint what colour, as all the fabrics tend to blend in with one another, creating differentiation and unity between hues and areas of cloth can be quite challenging. We're using pretty much every brand in the paint range and creating subtle changes across the model with different variations to try and keep a visually impactful model. We're going to be base coating the outer robes with a mix of Rhinoxide and Mournfan Brown. This will eventually yield us a slightly richer, more chocolatey brown for his outer garb when we're finished. Apply an all over layer to the outer robes by adding Bane Blade Brown to the previous Mornvang Rhinox mix. Note here, do not paint the trim at the edges of the outer robes, we'll be using a different brown to frame this later on. Once the wash is dried, reapply the previous mix leaving the Agrax surshade showing in the deepest recesses and folds of material. Again, the reverse of the cloak is very well defined so working out where these recesses are shouldn't be too problematic. We're going to start adding gradual amounts of Gorthor Brown to the base mix for the next few highlight stages. This will lift the tone nice and naturally without making it look too unnaturally bright or garish. At every successive highlight stage, focus on defining the flow of material by concentrating your highlights on the upper folds and crests of material. By the time you're at the penultimate highlight stage, your mix should contain no more than a 50% Gorthor Brown. Now for the final extreme edge highlight. We're going to be adding in a small amount of pallid witch flesh to the overall mix. This just helps provide one final boost in tone and when applied to the absolute edges and absolute upper folds of material will help give the impression of a billowing cloak catching the light as it breaks through the trees and mirkwood. At this stage you can also carefully frame the moth eaten holes along the bottom of the cloak. Now we have the bulk of the cloak done, it's time to frame it by painting that trim that falls down the edges of the cloak sleeves and the inner edges of the outer robes. We're going to start by base coating these areas with Doom Ball Brown. 
If at any point you find yourself struggling with application location, take a step back and have a proper look at where this trim starts and ends. Now we're going to paint the basic pattern to this trim which will just help lift it and make it pop against the main bulk of the brown. Apply a layer with a mix of Doomball Brown and Tuscal Fur. Apply this in thin horizontal lines up the length of the trim. This is a purely optional step and if you feel you'd rather not do this, a standard highlight down the trim will work just as well. Now we're going to very carefully highlight the freehand pattern with tusk or fur, just to make it pop that little bit more. This will take time and need a thin brush with a very good point to it, so make sure you take your time and try not to rush. Once you're happy with your freehand, carefully apply a mega thin line of Abaddon Black down the absolute edge of the trim. This, with the following stage, will just help frame the trim and separate it slightly from the main bulk of the outer robes. Now apply an extreme edge highlight over the Abaddon with Storm Vermin Fur, just to finish your framing. Now we're going to base coat all the inner robes on Radagast with XV88. This will give us a nice, slightly more tan look to his inner robe areas which will complement the more muted dark browns very well. Once the wash is dried, relayer again with XV88 leaving the wash showing in the recesses. Now we're going to push the tan look to these robes by applying another layer with a mix of XV88 and Baneblade Brown. For the final highlight we'll be adding in a small amount of Paddle Bitch Flesh to the previous XV88 Bane Blade mix and applying this on the edges and upper folds of material. Once you're happy with how your inner robes look, carefully repaint over the buttons with Abaddon Black. Now carefully pick out the buttons using Rune Lord Brass. Base coat Radagast trousers with Rakar's flesh. You might want to apply this in a few thin layers to get even coverage, but also be aware that thinned down paints can run slightly, and we want to avoid this seeping into the skin showing through the trouser holes. Apply a layer now with a mix of Rakar flesh and Palo Bridge flesh.
Once the wash is dry, reapply the previous Rakoff Flesh Pallid Witch Flesh layer, leaving the wash showing in the recesses. Finally, apply a highlight with pure Pallid Witch Flesh, paying particular attention to framing the moth eaten holes and raggedy edges of the trouser legs. Base coat the gloves, sleeves, boots and any other remaining parts of Radagast cloth with a mix of Abaddon Black and Rhinox Hide. Now we decided to make his shoes look a little bit more ragtag mix match here, just to further push the weird and wonderful nature of Radagast himself. So if you wish to do the same, these other areas can be painted with the exact same method, but using drier bark instead of Rhinox Hide here for the base mix. The change will be subtle, but noticeable once finished. Apply a layer now by adding Gawthor Brown to the previous mix. As we said before, regardless of what base brown you've gone for, the following layer and highlight stages can be executed exactly the same. Gawthor Brown will work for both messes really effectively. Once the wash is dried, layer over again with your chosen layer mix, leaving the wash showing in the recesses. Continue adding Gawthor Brown to the mix for the first highlight stage. With the gloves, focus on separating out the knuckle joints and match them up with the finger definition as much as possible, and start pushing the highlights towards the shape and creases of the boots themselves. Finally, apply an edge highlight now with pure Gawthor Brown to frame in all these extra brown areas. Once you're happy with how the sleeves look, very carefully pick out the filigree foliage details down the length of his forearms with Rakar flesh.
pick out any furs over Radagast, notably atop his boots with Rakarth flesh. Once the wash is dry, dot highlight with Palo Bridge flesh to give it a fluffy, textured look. Base coat the satchel with a mix of Storm Vermin fur and Abaddon black. As we said before, the Storm Vermin has very subtle brown hues to it, so despite the fact this will be a grey bag overall, it will still complement the overall look of the model without it blending in too much. Increase the amount of storm vermin fur in the mix for the first all over layer. Once the wash is dry, reapply the previous mix, leaving the wash showing in the creases and the centre of the satchel strap. Finally, apply an edge highlight with pure Storm Vermin fur, focusing on the very edges of the straps and framing the bulk of the satchel. Carefully pick out the foliage in the bag with a mix of castle and green and dried bark. Apply a layer now by adding some the messy desert to the previous mix. We don't want the foliage to look too fresh and vibrant, so this will bring up the tones more naturally than a bright green wood at this stage. Once the wash has dried, reapply the previous layer, focusing more on the tips of the plants to give a sense of shadow and depth beneath his arms. Add more Zemesi Desert to the mix for the final highlight over all the foliage. Now you can add as much or as little as you like here, depending on how fresh you want the plants to look. Carefully pick out Radagast, well, Gandalf staff, I guess, with dry bark. Now carefully highlight the gnarled top of the staff with Gorthor Brown. You can draw your paint in thin vertical lines down the length of the shaft to create a wood grain effect.
Now for a splash of colour. Pick out the gem carefully in the head of the staff with Kaledor Sky. Layer over now with Teclis Blue. You can focus on a few sides of the gem rather than its entirety to give the impression of light shining through it at an angle. Now, carefully highlight all the edges of the gem with Baharov Blue. Finally, apply a pinpoint dot highlight to the very corners with Pallid Witch Flesh. Now Radagast is done. Hooray! Just Sebastian left to paint. Paint the bulk of Sebastian's body with Rhinox Hide. Pick out Sebastian's ears and face with Bane Blade Brown. Once the wash is dry, carefully highlight Sebastian's face with Bane Blade Brown again, leaving the wash showing in the recesses. Stipple Gawthor Brown over Sebastian's body to give the prickly spiny hedgehog look. Finally, pick out his little button nose with Buckman's Glow. You can also pick out his tiny eyes with Abaddon Black and Pallid Witch Flesh here too if you wish. There we have it, Radagast the Brown finally finished, standing as an ever watchful guardian over the woods and wilds of Middle-earth. 